Hello friends, this is Ankit Joshi. Once again, welcome to Coffee with Concepts, a new session. And in this session, we are going to discuss how to evaluate complex integration. So here we are going to discuss complex integration technique with the help of Cauchy's integral formula and theorems. So stay tuned for the next 10 to 15 minutes and I will be giving you the sweetest way, the shortest way to calculate complex integration. So student, welcome to the session. Let's start. Cauchy's integral theorem. What is this Cauchy's integral theorem? Student, you are having a closed region. Let us say this closed region is closed region is C and the region bounded inside this C is nothing but R. So in this closed region, we have defined a complex function f of z which is completely analytic. It means there does not exist any singular point in this region and on the boundary for this function. So we have considered a closed curve C, f of z be a complex function which is completely analytic in the region R and as well as on the boundary. In that case what happens? The closed loop integral of this function f of z will be 0. So if there exists, if there exists no singular points in this region then this integration will be 0. This is Cauchy's integral theorem. Let us apply to this one of the examples. So student, you can see one example here, just go through this, here they have given you mod z equal to 2, so this mod z equal to 2 represents a circle, this is my x axis, this is my imaginary axis i y and mod z equal to 2 represents a circle whose center is at origin but radius is 2, center is origin, radius is 2, I am just drawing a circle, okay sir, you got the circle. This circle is mod z equal to 2. So obviously, this distance is 2 and this distance is minus 2. Now, see this function. In this function, when we equate the denominator to 0, we will get z equal to 4 and z equal to 5. So, z equal to 4 and z equal to 5 are the poles of this function. So, let us mark these poles on this z plane z equal to 4 and z equal to 5, both the poles are lying outside this region. So definitely these poles are not the singular point. So we can say that there is no singular point for this function in this region. So by Cauchy's integral theorem, this will be, by Cauchy's integral theorem, this function is completely analytic and hence the integration result will be. Let's proceed to a new variety. Now we are going to discuss Cauchy's integral formula. So in this case, the function f of z will not be completely analytic. It will be having certain points where function is not analytic. That is function is having certain singular points in the desired region. So you can just go through this. So we are having a closed curve C. This closed curve is enclosing a region R inside it. We are having a function g of z. This g of z is having a singular point at z equal to a. Okay. So what we can do? This g of z can be represented as f of z upon z minus a. So from this g of z, we have separated this singular point z equal to a by factorizing. So this f of z is completely analytic, but g of z is having singular point at a. So this kind of questions can be targeted using Cauchy's integral formula. So all my dear students, if you wish to integrate this g of z or you can say f of z upon z minus a, in that case the answer will be 2 pi i f of a, twice pi i and what is this f of a? In this numerator function you are supposed to substitute z equal to a. Let us evaluate this question. Now see here, we are having a circle mod z equal to 4. So I am drawing the real axis, then I am drawing the imaginary axis. Now I suppose to draw this circle mod z equal to 4 is a circle whose radius is 4 and center is at origin. So this is mod z equal to 4, correct? 
radius is 4, so this point will be 4 and this point will be minus 4. Now, this is our function g of z. In this g of z, when you equate the denominator to 0, you will get z equal to 2 and z equal to 5. So, z equal to 2 and z equal to 5 are the poles. z equal to 2 will be lying inside the circle and z equal to 5 will be lying outside the circle. So, the point which lies outside the circle is not a singular point, but the point which is lying inside the circle is a singular point. So, what you need to do, so students, you need to retain the singular point factor in the denominator. So, singular point is z equal to 2. So, the factor corresponding to z equal to 2 is z minus 2. We have to retain this in the denominator. 4z minus 3, this z minus 5 is clubbed with the numerator. So, all my dear students, this numerator is now completely analytic, which is denoted by f of z, and denominator is nothing but z minus 2. So, now I am going to apply Cauchy's integral formula. What, what is this Cauchy's integral formula? If you are integrating over the closed curve C, f of z upon z minus a, dz, then the answer will be twice pi i. Of a. Now, I am going to replace this f of z, f of z later. What is this a? a is nothing but 2. So, the answer for this integration should be 2 pi i f of 2, correct? 2 pi i and what is this f of z? This f of z is 4z minus 3 upon z minus 5. 4z minus 3 upon z minus 5. In this function, we supposed to substitute z equal to what you will get twice pi i. Now put z equal to 2. So 4 2s are 8, 8 minus 3 will be 5, and 2 minus 5 is minus 3. So students, I am getting the answer as minus 10 pi i by. So this is how we proceed with the Cauchy's integral formula. So Cauchy's integral formula is applicable when the function is not completely analytic. When function is completely analytic, we can go for Cauchy's integral theorem. So, the result of integration will be 0 in accordance with Cauchy's integral theorem. But if you are having certain singular points, then the result will be non-zero because those singularities will be contributing towards the integration. Okay? The same concept can also be realized with the help of Cauchy's residue theorem. So that's all from my side, students. Thank you so much for being with me. Love you all. Take care. Stay happy. Stay safe. Stay